Hey guys, it's Ricky here, and today I'm reviewing LEGO Star Wars Saucy Tins Jedi Starfighter. This set is ages 7 through 12, set number 9498. The set contains about 244 pieces, and the usual price for the set is $29.99. So let's get started. Included in the set is three new minifigures, two of which are new, the other one, which is an older minifigure, and the Saucy Tins Jedi Starfighter. So let's get started with the close ups. First up here with Saucy Tin. So here is Saucy Tin. This minifigure is the same Saucy Tin minifigure that was included with the T6 Jedi Shuttle back in early 2011. So nothing new with him. For accessories, he includes a green lightsaber with the darker variant of the green lightsaber blade and a chrome hilt. For printing details, he has his face printing, then his unique headpiece. As you can see you have the horns. On the back, Lego even engraved printing into the headpiece. That shows how much time and effort that Lego put into this mud minifigure. And you have some other various printing details. Here's a better look at the face printing. There's no printing on the back of his face. His torso printing is very basic. It's very basic Jedi robes. On the back, you have some more printing. And that's pretty much it for Saucy Tin. And then you have, have his white arms, which are supposed to represent his clumpy bear armor wrist gauntlets, which are only go up to about the elbow, I believe, in the series. When Lego puts it as a whole arm, I'd rather have brown arms be put on these minifigures. Next up is the new Jedi, Evan Peel. Now this figure has been long waited ever, ever since the Citadel arc of Season 3 of Star Wars The Clone Wars. A lot of people have been wanting to see a LEGO Star Wars Evan Peel minifigure. For accessories he includes a green lightsaber, just like Saucy Tins. For printing details, you have his very nice face printing. As you can see there. Then you have this new headpiece designed for Evan Peel, which has his long ears, which reminds me and some other people of Dobby from Harry Potter. Evan Peel could probably pass as, bro as Dobby's brother, except he's a little bit smarter and he's a Jedi. But that's pretty nice. There is some printing on the headpiece. As you can see, you have the scar on his right eye. His eyebrows are also printed on there. You have some more scarring. His gray ponytail. Remove the headpiece and you have his face printing. And even though LIGO printed the eyebrows and other various Evan Peel face marks on the headpiece here, they still printed on the face. Which looks superb. As you see, his right eye is closed shut with the red scar running through it. And the only flaw of this minifigure really is, if you put this all the way down, then you're covering most of his eye, which is very inaccurate. Lego could have done a better job on it. This minifigure is, is supposed to be really important. He's Evan Peel, he's been a long way to Jedi minifigure. That's no problem with me. Then you have his torso printing. You have his Jedi robe. And on the back, you have some more printing. And he does have black short legs because he is a short character in the Clone Wars TV series. So that's what we all for Evan Peel. Next up is the second new minifigure and the last R3D5. Now, this Astromech Droid is a really nice Astromech Droid. He does feature a lot of printing. As you can see on his dome, you have a lot of green printing. You have his eye and all his different bells and whistles. The printing design on the dome and the body does resemble the printing design of other Clone Wars Astromech Droids. And the difference between the Clone Wars Astromech Droids and the movie Astromech Droids 
are that these Clone Wars ones have printing that looks a little bit more cartoonish and animated, if you guys know what I mean. I have another Clone Wars Astromic Droid here, R2-D2. As you can see, the printing style both looks the same, it's both an animated look. But, but other than that, really nice printing. So then you have his printing on his body, you have all his white markings, all his different bells and whistles. He has no printing on his green legs, no printing on the back. But nonetheless, a very nice Astromic Droid to add to your Astromic Droid collection. So that's all for the minifigure guys. So now let's go on to the main attraction of the set. Saucy Tin's Jedi Starfighter. So here is Saucy Tin's Jedi Starfighter. Really nice Starfighter. Each year now, since 2008, LEGO has been making a new Jedi Starfighter model. In 2008 was Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. 2009 was Ahsoka's. 2010 was Plo Koon's. 2011 was Mace Windu's. And now, 2012, we have the Saucy Tin. You could seat R3D5 or any Asmic Droid in the Asmic Droid socket of the Starfighter. You could see Evan Peel in the cockpit. And unlike other Jedi Starfighter designs where you actually had when you would put the Jedi in the cockpit and of course he, included, he or she included a lightsaber, where would you put the lightsaber? Some people just stick it would stick it in the cockpit, the lightsaber, just break it up and have it wobble in there. But now Lego included on the bottom of the Starfighter a piece to hold Saucy Tin's lightsaber. So that's a really nice uh, part of the Starfighter. You don't have to vanish the lightsaber or lose it. The set does have 10 stickers. You have various markings and whatnot. You have the Republic symbol. For play features, you have four flip fire missiles. You have two on the top and two on the bottom, which is nicer for the younger generations who love flip fire missiles. But the older generations, such as I and other reviewers, don't really like flip fire missiles. And the other play feature, which is pretty cool, you actually get to remove the cockpit as an escape pod, which I guess the astronaut droids goes dies in space. But anyways. So here's the cockpit, really nice. This, the cockpit is actually my favorite part of this model. It really captures a look of the Jedi Starfighter cockpit. Or I should say the actual name for these Jedi Starfighters, if you're not familiar, is Delta 7B Athosprite Class Light Interceptor. That's the actual name for these Jedi Starfighters. But you know, people just call them Jedi Starfighters. <laughs> oh wow, it actually came off. But anyways, you open the cockpit, there is a printed element inside there, a control panel that we've been seeing in LEGO Star Wars sets for a while now. Now, what's nice about this cockpit is that you actually have the bubble cockpit and it hinges open. Unlike other Jedi Starfighters, you actually have to pop open the cockpit. So that's one big part. Uh, a flaw with the cockpit that a lot of people are pointing out and, the, and don't like that is that this is open right here. It doesn't really bug me because LEGO had to do that in order to incorporate these pieces into the build. Which is more of what you would call a trade-off. But I'd rather have these nice pieces right here. Make it look more accurate. I don't really care about the you know the little gap right here. And then you have the uh the tail I would call it. And before this was a Lego flag piece, but now Lego put these pieces here, which is a lot more sturdier before it used to wobble. And that's really all for your cockpit. So you can just plug that back in. For the engines, it's the same engines that we've been seeing with the previous Jedi Starfighter models. You have a blue translucent cylinders inside there to give it the look that that's thrust. Color scheme on this Jedi Starfighter is gold, green, white, and some black. So not bad at all. And unlike the other Jedi Starfighter models, this one's a little bit longer. The other ones are shorter. And to compare, I have the 2009s. Ahsoka Jedi Starfighter. Now this model is a bit old. But as you can see, you, you used to have to pop off the cockpit here. I'm not going to do it, but you guys know what I mean. And I had to put the lightsaber inside there. This, like, kind of, you know, swiveled back here. It was loose. The model was a little bit shorter, as you can see here. So 
Saucy Ten Shy Starfighter is way longer. But the older Dry Star Farm models do have more printing. And this one has more stickers, but Lego saves their money and they give us the, these other new minifigures instead. But that's really all for the Saucy 10 Dry Star Fighter. So before I go, I want to give you guys a look at the instruction manual. Which is what I thought was pretty funny is that Lego included two instruction manuals for such a small set. And how could Lego really do that? I mean, I guess it could be for the younger generations, it's easier to build, less, uh, more steps. On the back of the first instruction, or not the second instruction manual, you have an ad for the comic builder at LegoStars.com. You have other sets. You have all the new 2012 summer sets, minifigures. Then you have a little comic, which is pretty much Evan Peel says goodbye to the saucy tin, who's, who's hidden in space. Boom, he goes into space. And you know, he battles some malevolence on Jedi Starfighter, which is a really idiotic move. Look at that. His rat ring gets blown to pieces. He deserves it. And then he jetsons in his escape pod cockpit. And the poor little droid R3D5 is left to die. So, yeah. So now, let me, let me give you guys a look at the box. Here's the box. It's in the new 2012 packaging design with the Darth Maul the right hand, right top hand corner. You have a new minifigure bar which shows the new minifigures, Evan Peel and the R3-D5. You have the set info on the top. You have the actual size images of the minifigures. On the back we have all the play features. And yeah, I forgot to mention, you do have retractable landing gear on the Starfighter such as the other Jedi Starfighters had. You could retract the landing gear up and down. But other than that, you just have blueprint schematics of the set, images of the play features, it's flick fire missiles, and that's really all. So now let's get on to the pros and cons of the set. This set is a good set, I really recommend this set. Uh, the pros, you got a new Evan Peel, you got a new Jedi Starfire model, which is, in my opinion is the ultimate Jedi Starfire model. I mean, if you compare it to, to this, that's 10 times better, and every year LEGO has been making somewhat the same model with this, you know, cockpit and stuff, and now LEGO decided to really go beyond the boundaries and give us the ultimate Jedi Starfighter model. So, yeah. There's not really much cons with this set. The only con I can really think of that Evan Peel's, his headpiece here kind of goes down a little bit too much. And all the stickers in the set. But other than that, this is a great set. I recommend this. For me, this is probably my favorite LEGO Star Wars Summer set, this or the Desert Skiff. And I've always been a fan of Jedi Starfighters. I didn't pick up the Mace with the Jedi Starfighter, but all the Jedi Starfighters before that I do have. And my first LEGO Star Wars Summer, not Summer set, but my first LEGO Star Wars set in general, when I started collecting, was the Anakin Jedi Starfighter. So, you know, Jedi Starfighters have always been a, a special part of my collection. And I really like to collect them and see the evolution of these. So, that's really all for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it informative. I recommend the set. Until the next review, which will be on the Desert Skift. Bye, guys.